Shalom, my friends. Welcome to this week's newscast. Never before shown in, in public in Israel is the 2,000-year-old Dead Sea Scroll containing a complete copy of the Ten Commandments being displayed at the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. The manuscript is very brittle, so it will only be displayed for public viewing for a period of two weeks, from May 1st through the 14th. And then it'll be returned to its pitch-black climate-controlled facility. The IDF Home Front Command released an updated version of its rocket alert map on Sunday, May 10th, showing people how long they have in a given area to seek shelter from rocket attacks. Residents of Tel Aviv and Jerusalem have 90 seconds to take cover. Res residents of Haifa have one minute, while those near the border with Gaza, Lebanon, or Syria have only 15 seconds. Turning to wars and rumors of wars, on Tuesday, May 5th, Hezbollah troops ambushed an al-Nusra convoy in Kalamun on the outskirts of the Lebanese enclave of Tfal, killing 15 militants. At least four Hezbollah members, including a Hezbollah field commander, were killed also. A UN bomb disposal team guided a combat engineer wearing a heavy protective suit toward four bodies lying at the foot of Mount Hermon last Tuesday. The bundle of explosives carried by one of the terrorists was clearly visible. The four had attempted to lay explosives intended for IDF soldiers, but Israeli troops saw them cross the ceasefire line and begin laying charges in an area that is undisputedly Israeli. Israel Air Force jets fired several precision missiles that thwarted the attack and took out the perpetrators. The attempted attack was carried out just 350 meters from a UN post right under the noses of the Irish battalion stationed there. Had the UN officers picked up their binoculars, they would have seen the four heading for their destination. For defense of the Golan Heights, the IDF has prepared a well-defended border with a new fence at its center, tied to a system of alerts, as well as broad technological and human intelligence gathering tools. An IDF mobile unit operates in the area round the clock backed by an array of sensors, radars, and cameras operated both day and night by soldiers deep in Israeli territory together with unmanned aircraft that enable Israel to see everything that moves on the ground. And on Wednesday, May 6th, Ahmed Bar, a senior Hamas representative, told a rally in Gaza on Wednesday that Hamas has 100,000 men who are ready to liberate Palestine. Hezbollah's Al-Manar television reported that Hezbollah bid farewell to the Mujahideed martyr, who was only 15 years old. Iran's support for Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, in addition to economic aid, arms, and advice, includes combat forces from Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, the IRGC, from Hezbollah in Lebanon, and from Iraq, uh, uh, Afghan, and Pakistani Shiite militias that are loyal to them. Initially, these organizations focused on defending Shiite holy sites in Syria, but over time, the fighting expanded to the most difficult anti-opposition fronts. According to the Syrian opposition, 
Thousands of fighters trained by the IRGC have arrived in Syria on four daily flights from Iran to Latakia. Iran also has begun to organize and oversee Syrian forces fighting alongside the regime, such as Syrian Hezbollah, Liwa al-Quds, the National Religious Resistance, Jais al-Imam al-Mahdi, the National Resistance in Huran, and Liwa al-Rida al-Shi'i. Some of the Iran-operated Syrian popular resistance groups, such as Syrian Hezbollah, stress that their aim is to operate against Israel, not only against the Syrian opposition. Brigadier General Hossein Salami, the deputy commander of the Revolutionary Guard Corps, said in an interview on state-run television, Quote, we welcome war with the United States as we do believe that it will be the scene for our success to display the real potentials of our power. We have prepared ourselves for the most dangerous scenarios and this is no big deal. Close quote. <laughs> then on Monday, May 11th, yesterday, Hezbollah opened an office opposite the provincial police headquarters in the coastal Syrian city of Latakia, a stronghold of the Assad regime. Hezbollah's flag was raised above the building and displayed on its balconies while dozens of four-wheel drive cars filled the street. Hezbollah has also converted a Sunni mosque in the city into a Shiite seminary and prevented the mosque's Sunni imam from entering the building. The Samaria military court on Sunday, May 10th, indicted three Palestinian 17-year-olds who planned to attack a bus of civilians inside Israel. They acquired four knives, two gas masks, and strychnine poison to try to gas passengers on the bus before stabbing them. All three participated in preparatory and surveillance activities, but one of them reneged on the terrorist attack at the last moment. Also, an Israeli man, 19 years old, was stabbed in the back by an Arab who attacked him at a hitchhiking spot in Mishur Adumim, near Jerusalem. Syrian government helicopters dropped leaflets over a northwestern town, Jisr al-Shugur, held by Muslim militants calling on fighters to surrender and residents to stay away from militant positions as battles intensified nearby. Then a group of ISIS hackers threatened at 2 p.m. yesterday on Monday to carry out a cyber attack dubbed Message to America against unspecified targets in the United States. Shortly after the deadline, a video was released claiming that the group had hacked into the websites of Washington leaders as well as Australian airports. Quote, we are the hackers of the Islamic State. The electronic war has not yet begun, the voice said. We observe all the movements you are making from your devices. Soon you will see how we control your electronic world. Last month it was reported by The Guardian that the terror group's Caliph Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi was seriously wounded in a, unit, in a U.S. coalition airstrike in western Iraq in March, leaving him with injuries which allegedly rendered him incapable of carrying out the day-to-day -day duties as Caliph. Speaking to Newsweek, Dr. Hisham al-Hashimi, the Iraqi government advisor, confirmed that Abu al-Afri... Al the self-proclaimed caliph's deputy and a former physics teacher has now been installed as the stand-in leader of the terror group in Baghdadi's absence. There's little doubt that Iran lies about everything and will continue to lie. 
but that doesn't seem to matter to those negotiating with it. The White House and its negotiating partners first eased the sanctions that had been compelling Tehran to negotiate and then effectively tabled the military option. Since then, they have made a seemingly unending catalog of tangible and irreversible concessions to which the Iranians have responded with increased hostility. Given that Iran has for decades refused to come into compliance with its international obligations, has sought to destabilize the Middle East, and has waged a deadly war against America and its allies when pressure was in place, it stands to reason that when pressure is removed, Iran will ramp up its illicit nuclear activity, tighten its grip on the Middle East, and intensify its attacks against Western targets. The White House has become captive to its own desire to achieve a deal, and that has caused Iran to make even greater demands. America is not just in a season of decline, my friends. We are facing absolute implosion. That's the newscast for this week, my friends. I'll be willing I'll see you here again next week. Until then, stay safe. Shalom.